in your floor, Mr. George Hill. Mr. Chairman, dear friends, ladies and gentlemen, we need an effective global framework to tackle the growing challenge of climate change. That framework must observe the key principles articulated in the UNFCCC. Developed countries must continue to take the lead on reducing emissions. Developing countries should slow down the increase in carbon emissions based on the principle of common but differentiated responsibilities in the respective capabilities and in a manner which does not stifle the economic growth. Reducing carbon emissions is half the equation of reducing greenhouse gases. The other half increasing carbon capture. At the APEC leaders meeting in Sydney recently, member countries resolved to increase forest cover in the region. The initiative to reduce emissions from deforestation and degradation, REDD, especially the promotion of sustainable forest management, is important. Tropical forests and marine ecosystems play an important role in the health of our planet. We must protect them. In 1997-98, when the El Nino effect was in its worst in decades, forest fires in Southeast Asia released 700 million metric tons of CO2 to the atmosphere, according to some experts. Last year, which was a weak El Nino year, more than 8 million hectares of forest were destroyed by fire in the month of September alone. Peatland fires are a particular problem in Indonesia. One Indonesian minister explained to me that during the Suharto government, for lack of knowledge, large areas of peatland were drained for cultivation. Dry peatland fires are almost impossible to extinguish. We still lack understanding of forests, mangrove swamps, and coral reefs. Policymakers themselves need to take a greater interest in the science. Prescriptions by developed countries to developing countries on carbon emissions are sometimes perceived as self-serving. We cannot ignore developmental needs unless the system encourages local inhabitants to protect trees instead of chopping them down. The problem of de deforestation cannot be solved. There must be assistance by developed countries in resources, in technology transfer, and expertise. However, there must also be a system of surveillance and control to ensure that money is properly used and not channeled to the wrong hands. Corruption is a major problem that has to be overcome. Tropical forests and marine ecosystems can help sustain the rich economy. Mangrove swamps are ideal for agriculture, provided there is proper control on the use of chemicals and disposal of waste. However, much more research is needed. Developed countries can do a lot to help. It is not only carbon capture that we are concerned with, but also the, the, the biodiversity that these regions hold. Even a small patch of tropical forests in Singapore has more biodiversity than large parts of Europe or North America. It is estimated that tropical forests in Southeast Asia, Africa, and South America contain more than 50% of all the plant and animal species on our planet. The Heart of Borneo Initiative deserves our full support. It covers 220,000 square kilometers of land in Indonesia, Malaysia, and Brunei. Brunei, which is not a big country, played a major role and set aside 50. 8% of its total land area for this initiative, which is a magnificent contribution. The island of Borneo is home to 13 species of primates, 150 species of reptiles and amphibians, and over 350 species of birds and 15,000 species of plants. And every year, there are new discoveries. In Sumatra, Singapore and Malaysia are working with neighboring Indonesian provinces to tackle peatland fires and develop sustainable land clearing practices. 
meet Southeast Asia, and then match okay, experience of the Amazonian region. So considerable research has been done, and which now has a comprehensive system of surveillance. The Chairman said, governments alone cannot do all the work. You can engage the private sector and establish regulatory frameworks which bring positive market forces to play. Technology can, set, can solve many of the problems we face, but the right incentives must be safe. We need the help of local communities as well. NGOs can play a very positive role, monitoring progress and blowing whistles. Without passion and persistence and a sense of the whole earth, we will not be able to overcome the resistance to effective action. 